The first case study was conducted on the Capitol Park trees in Madison, Wisconsin. There were 153 trees in the lawn park surrounding the state capitol building on the heavily used square in the center of the city. The park managers were concerned about tree stability after some tree failures. Here's a video of one of those failures captured on a surveillance camera. The Norway maple damaged a parked car and narrowly missed a group of visiting school children who had just emerged from a school bus. I designed a non-destructive evaluation procedure for detecting internal decay and cracks in the park trees. I started with a visual inspection of all directly and indirectly observable defects. This, of course, required climbing into many larger trees. There were 12 squirrels living in this large cavity in heartwood decay. Next, I employed the single path stress wave tool to perform quick and inexpensive screening tests of the lower trunks of all larger trees. I conducted two tests at right angles to each other at varying heights on the trunks. The results were compared to the anticipated stress wave velocities in comparable tree species. Those tables are published in the United States Forest Service report, Assessment of Decay in Standing Timber Using Stress Wave Timing Non-Destructive Evaluation Tools. These tables offer a range of values only. There are no uniform reference standards. Stress wave velocities of solid wood can vary due to moisture levels and tree growing conditions. Therefore, it is important to conduct a self-reference test on a part of the tree or a comparable neighboring tree that is known to be sound. In this study, if the sampled cross trunk section had a velocity reduction greater than 25% of the solid wood reference standard, it failed the screening test. Multi-path acoustic tests were then conducted on trees with possible problems, as indicated by the visual and single path stress wave test. The multi-path acoustic test generated tomograms requiring interpretation to identify the type, size, and location of internal trunk defects. In the case of this 100-year-old red oak, tests at cross-section elevations of 10 centimeters, 100 centimeters, and 200 centimeters indicated decay and defect most severe at the root collar level. Tomography software is able to combine the three tomograms, creating a 3D representation of the study area on the trunk. Resistograph tests were required to verify the exact type and extent of the suspected defects and decay indicated on tomograms. The value of tomograms in those cases was that they identified the best location for drilling, significantly reducing the number of drills required and enhancing the value of the data acquired. Resistograph testing indicated snake cracking in a large area of heartwood decay at the root collar area of the red oak. Having carefully progressed using the procedure in gathering and interpreting the data, I had confidence to recommend the removal of this historic and very public tree. Measurements of the defect, knowledge of the way decay interacts with the wood, and understanding the physical requirements for mechanical tree stability led to the conclusion that this tree had a high probability of failure under loading due to trunk cracks and root collar decay. This lower trunk section fell apart as it was removed due to the decay and advanced cracking. A 300-page report was submitted to the park managers detailing the cases of internal decay and defect revealed using these combined non-destructive testing methods. Select tree removal and pruning were conducted based on the report's conclusions. Just weeks before the last two trees were to be removed, a violent storm with unusually high velocity winds passed through the Capitol Park, causing these two remaining trees to fail. Of the remaining 143 trees in the park, the only trees to fail were those two that had been identified as at risk using the procedure. Seldom does nature cooperate so fully in validating a procedure for testing tree stability.